Hello friends and followers, I'm Ian Trevethan, Education and Outreach Director here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, and this is a new way to museum. So I'm super excited to be able to talk to you about a very special time for a very special fossil on display here in our main fossil gallery at our museum. And that fossil is directly behind me. And what we're looking at is a 13 foot fish called a Xyphactinus, and inside its stomach is a six foot fish called a Gillicus, famously known as the fish within a fish. And what's really exciting is this week will be the 70th anniversary of the discovery of the fish within a fish. So in 1952, George F. Sternberg discovered in Gove County this very fossil behind me. And it was excavated during Fourth of July weekend and brought back to what was then the museum. And it was prepped and cleaned out. And when uh, George Sternberg discovered that there was actually a second fish inside of there, things got really kind of interesting. Um, at the time, uh, it was common practice to sell fossils to bigger museums. That was part of his contract. That was part of how he made his, his paycheck. And at the time, that was acceptable practice in paleontology. These days, not so much anymore. But at the time, that's kind of how he made ends meet. And the museum that he offered the Xyphactinus to actually turned him down because they had already had a much larger, more complete uh, Xyphactinus in their collection. And he said, no, you, you've got to see what's in the stomach region. There's, there's, there's contents in there. And that museum came back and said, you know what? We've already got a Xyphactinus that's large, that's complete, and it's got gut contents. So you go ahead and keep this one. And what may have been a mistake or a misjudgment for that museum was actually a boon to us. As it turns out, what we're looking at is a very complete specimen of a fish called Gillicus, and it's one of the, the most complete specimens in the world. So it's a really, really important thing for people who study fossil fish. So one of the really cool things to think about when you're in this museum and you're viewing the fossil itself on display is if you look behind me, you'll notice that it's in a big chunk of plaster. And again, things have changed a little bit in terms of how we excavate these things and how we treat them nowadays. Uh, but in Sternberg's time, really the focus was on bringing a fossil back and putting it on display for the general public to see. And there was a real art to it. So if you look behind me, what's happened is he's actually encased the entire fossil in a big slab of, of plaster. And the way this was done is actually the side that's facing the wall uh, was the side that was actually first exposed when it was out in the field. And if you, you have to have really sharp eyes, but there's a hairline break in the middle of the, of the slab here. So those were actually individually flipped over and brought back to his lab where he was able to clean and prep out and restore some of the missing bones that, that were missing out of the entire skeleton. Um, one of the other really cool things about this particular fossil is the texture and color of the plaster behind me. You'll notice that there is sort of a, what I would call a stippled texture, and that's all hand done. Uh, that, in a lot of ways, is sort of George Sternberg's signature right there. Uh, he had a unique color palette that he mixed to make the plaster sort of this yellow limestone-like color, and then he would texture all of his fossils by hand. So even some of, some of the fossils that you find um, with sediment or matrix still in like some of the holes, you'll notice that he'll actually hand texture some of those, um, the, the leftover sediment. So that's a, a real, um, I think historically significant, um, or like I said, almost signature, almost a way of George Sternberg signing his, his um, exhibit pieces. So that makes this display really kind of unique. So one of the other things to consider is this kind of presents a mystery to people who come and look at it. And for children, when they come through on tours, uh, one of the things I try to ask is, well, how did two skeletons like this end up together like this? Well, the obvious answer is the big fish ate the little fish. And that is, in fact, correct. And one of the ways we know that the Xyphactinus uh, ate the Gillicus is actually the Gillicus, if you look closely at the bones of the Gillicus, it's actually been partially digested or slightly acid etched away. So we do have evidence that this 
smaller fish, the gillicus, is partially digested in the gut of the xiphactinus. So um, we, we actually have a little bit of sort of a snapshot of a food web. Um, one of the other things that I hear a lot uh, when I'm talking to the general public is sort of this idea that whatever killed the large fish, uh, some people like to say that it choked to death, that's pretty speculative. Uh, there's not a lot of evidence on the skeleton that, sh that suggests anything about what might have killed the Xiphactinus. Uh, all we can really say is that it died with a pretty uh, recent meal in its stomach, which may not have been a good thing for him, but it's a very good thing for us because we've got this wonderful specimen. So the next time you come into the museum, be sure to ask yourself these questions, to look closely at these bones, to appreciate the craftsmanship that went into making this a public display. And uh, feel free to send us any questions or comments if you've got any. And remember to like us on Facebook. That helps us a lot, as well as uh, YouTube <laughs> and all the other social media platforms that we're on. We'll see you next time on A New Way to Museum. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.